Click on the bell and you will see when I upload sporadically. Hey guys and welcome into the Raxi Report. I was on the BBC again. I'm just going to come out and say it. I was on the BBC again and uh, not today, a couple of days ago. This this uh, audio you're going to be hearing after I finish speaking uh, was completely uh, random. I didn't expect them to ask me the questions that they asked me. So they called me up again and were like, Hey, can you come on and talk about gender neutrality in the future? What if men and women were just completely classed as equal and there was no gender boundaries anymore in terms of clothing or work or kind of where they would be put in jobs and stuff like that, which really fascinates me. So I had a list of questions all ready to go and answers that I I thought through and I, I'd researched for like an entire night. And then they get me on the air and basically just interview me about my transition. So this was the first time that I had ever talked about my transition on the air um, completely randomly and it was all on the spot. And I'm hoping I did a good job. <laughs> uh, they said that they enjoyed the interview and they said that I did a good job. Um, but uh, I'll let you guys make that decision for yourselves. Uh, this is quite interesting, I suppose, for anyone who doesn't know my story and doesn't know my transition. Uh, this this video might be good for you guys to hear and it might help someone out there. And that was the main goal of me going on the air in the first place was to hopefully help educate people and it just turned out that I educated them about my transition instead of gender neutrality. <laughs> anyway, I cannot thank them enough for having me on. You were all amazing. I'm being interviewed in this interview by Graham Seaman as opposed to Graham Rogers. Uh, he is fantastic. He's been on the BBC for years, same as Graham Rogers. There, Everyone there is amazing. And Ben, who got me involved in the first place, thank you. Uh, just, I, I love all of them, <laughs> and to be able to be interviewed by my, like, radio heroes is quite cool, to be exact. I cannot thank you enough for the support you guys have given me. So here is the interview about my transition, and me coming out, and so many other things that they asked me on the spot, and uh, thankfully I'd had experience from telling you guys before, <laughs> so... <laughs> Here is the audio. Roxy Clark from Salisbury is best described as a transgender activist and has been uh, making the transition from male to female in recent years. And we've spoken to Roxy before here on BBC Wiltshire. And she has a growing social media profile that's proving quite popular, particularly in America, uh, so it turns out. And uh, Roxy's back with us today for a bit of a chat. Roxy, hi, nice to talk to you. Hello, Graham. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Thank you very much. I was, I've been uh, looking at some of your social media uh, stuff as well and been absolutely fascinated by sort of your views on life and what, you know, what you've um, yourself have been uh, dealing with and, and how you've been coping with it. Now, if we just start with the business of transgender, it's explained as someone whose gender differs from the one they were given when they were born with. At what point yeah. did you realise that things were different for you? Uh, I think it was school. Um, probably secondary school was when I really kind of felt out of my comfort zone. When... I, when I was, especially in the changing room uh, for sports, I hated it. I, I didn't want to get changed with the boys. I felt completely uncomfortable. Um, and I would change in the toilets. It was that bad. Um, it was, it was, it was a hard experience because no one ever told me. I never knew anything about the transgendered community. I never knew anything about gender dysphoria and, um, it wasn't until college where I finally learnt that this existed and there was these forums online and people talking about it where I could find information and have some kind of clarity that I wasn't mad, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and in a way that's a kind of reassurance for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. I, I felt so much uh, happier knowing that there are other people like me um, because un up until that point, I I didn't know what I was. I, I had that, had thoughts that maybe I was gay, maybe there was something wrong with me. I didn't honestly know, and it was so um, it was so nice to be able to finally have something where I could look at it and go, okay, I'm this. I can now talk to a doctor about it. <laughs> Now, while you've identified yourself with a different gender, yeah. uh, some actually never feel an affinity with either male or female. So yeah, yeah. 
how do you how how do you how does that square with you in terms of where you are? I mean, that must be. Do you know anybody? Have you come across people who are in that situation? I've met people who are non-binary and intersex, and those people are, are fantastic. I I don't have any issue. I, I don't see any issue with that. If if they don't see themselves fitting into a particular gender role, that's absolutely okay. Um, I I don't see why we should as a human race be forced into you're a boy, you must like video games, and you're a girl, you must like Barbie. I, I, I've never, I've never understood that, and it's always annoyed me when I've gone into stores and people will push certain items at you, and I'm just like, no, but I want to look at this pretty thing over here. Or, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> people um, are making assumptions, which is wrong, really. Isn't yeah, it? definitely. Um, I, of course, when I, uh, for most of my life, I was male in very commas, and I. <laughs> Mentally, I've always been female, um, and I was working for nurseries around Wiltshire uh, for charities and everything else. And I would work at these nurseries because I had a um, child care at NVQ um, level two. And I'd, I'd go to these nurseries, and the amount of um, people that would look at me and ask, "Why are you? Why are you working here? You are male." That yeah was shocking. That that shouldn't be the case. It, I, I don't understand why we have to be put into these separate folders and separate like lines of work. I, I've, I've never understood that. Now, tell us more about um, the, the transition that you're, because you're still going through this transition yourself at the moment, aren't you? At what yeah. point, at what stage are you at at the moment? Um, I'm near the end, <laughs> um, finally. I, I've, I started transitioning, well, I came out in 2011, and oh, what was been... that like when you when you did? Sorry to interrupt, Roxy, no. but um, I'm sure you've answered this question so many times. But what was that like for you to actually come out and to tell <sighs> your family and to tell your friends? Um, hard. Uh, it was the biggest biggest decision of my life because if uh, it hadn't gone the way I planned, then I might have been kicked out of my house. Um, that is a way that unfortunately a lot of trans people have their experiences, and that is wrong. Um, I came out to my stepbrother who laughed at first until he realised I was being serious and then he was like, you need to talk to your stepmom about this. And I did and I discussed it with her quite um, thoroughly. Um, I think the hardest one was my father uh, who has never been particularly open. He's he's very kind of closed off when it comes to anything LGBT up until that point and he didn't really know anything about it. And I... I, I had a I had a mental breakdown before telling him, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, he, but your was, dad's okay with it now, isn't he? He's amazing. He is the well. He's uh, in your videos and everything. I mean, it's yeah. You know. he, it, the, 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 I, I, it's it's cliche to say, but he is the best father in the world. He is the Excellent. nicest man, and he has taken everything on board. I think when I knew that he was understanding of it, he joked about it. And that was, that was, for me, that was kind of like, right, he's made a joke about it, which means he's comfortable to start talking about it. Yeah, that's a, always a good 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 indication. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt while you were telling us the story about your transition and what that's been like for you, because uh, uh, no, but it was, I was interested funny. to know that. But but so so you're you're near the end of this now. What what is what what is it? Uh, people would would like to know. I mean, uh, have you has it has it been medical and surgical intervention as well for you? Uh, yeah, med uh, definitely medical at the moment. I haven't had um, the surgery. Um, <laughs> that's next year, probably. Uh, but no, uh, if, in terms of medical stuff, um, est estradiol is what I'm on, which is estrogen. Um, I'm on about four milligrams a day. And that brings my estrogen level up and, and brings my testosterone level down because I also have a spiritin um, injection every three months. And that that's been great and the, the basically what estradiol does what estrogen estrogen does as a whole it will basically uh, uh kind of shape out your face it will distribute it will distribute fat around your body to where a female's kind of lumps would be <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah i got I you suppose. um yeah it's 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 great it's amazing the the wonders of medical stuff it just fascinates me and the, what they've been able to do for me is great um but no i haven't had any surgery as of yet um and voice is something that i think a lot of people um ask as well and that isn't something 
that just happens. You have to work on that yourself. That isn't done mm. through hormone treatment. Now, Roxy, I mean, some people will be listening to this and they'll, they'll be saying, and, and I'm sure, you know, you, you are aware of this. They'll say, yeah. you know, you should be who God made you to be and who you were born to be, whatever your God happens to or whoever your God happens to be. Yeah. So what do you I mean, obviously, you, you must have questioned during this this period when it comes to gender. Uh, what do you put the, the feeling of being unhappy with the gender you were born with down to? What, what, have you ever have you ever sort of looked deep, more deeply into this or have you just tried to accept the way it is and that's it? I don't think anyone knows what causes it, and it, I th- I've looked, I've looked this up so many times. Different pe- different uh, physicians, and different people who are in the in the kind of uh, gender kind of doctor role, all have different opinions. My personal opinion um, is when you're in the womb um, for the first, I think, two or three weeks, uh, we are all female. Uh, what happens is in the womb when we are all female the body then decides, right, I'm going to be male or female. And it then puts in, like, the amount of testosterone or whatever to then develop. I think it's something in that process that goes wrong. That's the best example I can give, and Mm. it's the closest that I can understand to being a reality. I I don't think, and I've mentioned on the show before, I don't think it's mental. Um, I don't think it's a mental health issue, and I, I've I've discussed that with um with Graham before, and it's yeah. it's 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 hard to explain without really knowing, and I don't think anyone knows particularly, but that is the kind of closest I can get to an answer for you. Well, all I can say, Rox, is I'm pleased you've uh, found who you want to be and that you're happy with that and that you're taking that forward. And we wish you every success for the future. And thank you for being so candid with us again today. I appreciate it. No, any any time I can be open, I I will be. And I I, I hope that people, I just want to say to people out there, be who you want to be. Don't let other people get you down. Just be you and be awesome. Excellent. Roxy Clark there from Salisbury. Brilliant.